Yo, Darius Spirit here, and today is all about three act story structure. Disclaimer, I am not a story guru, I am learning just like everybody else, but I have written a few scripts, I'm really familiar with it, and I just want to share my knowledge with you guys. Alright guys, this one's going to be a little long, so get ready. What is 3X structure? Well, it's the basics of storytelling. As you know, every movie has a beginning, a middle, and an end. In a nutshell, it's a guide used to write and evaluate stories, and it's nothing new, it's actually pretty old. It's Aristotle old. Why is 3X structure so important? Well, I could give you three reasons. Number one, it's a roadmap. Anybody who's written a screenplay before knows how tough it is is to write a movie. There's a lot of this going on. Ah! It's like putting a puzzle together. It's extremely creatively challenging and it's easy to get lost. 3X story structure is meant to guide you and keep you from getting lost. It's a tool to help you build your story. And number two, it helps keep your story moving forward and progressing. Nothing bores an audience quicker than repetition. Story structure is the backbone that keeps your story changing and evolving so it stays engaging and doesn't become redundant. And number three, have you ever watched a movie and thought this to yourself? Nothing's happening. This sucks. 70% of movies that drag and don't seem to go anywhere usually have bad story structure. Something to think about. There are many interpretations of the 3 act structure floating around out there. It seems like every other screenwriting book or guru has their own version of it with their own terminology, but at the end of the day, it's all basically the same thing. The industry standard versions of it can be found in Blake Snyder's Save the Cat, Sid Field's Screenplay, Robert McKee's Story, and Joseph Campbell's The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Although The Hero with a Thousand Faces isn't specific to movies, it does cover ideas about myths in general, which is very useful. So according to Sid Field, each of the three acts is separated by two Two plot points in each act serves a specific function in the story. One page of a screenplay is roughly one minute in movie time. Act one is the setup. It's the first 25 to 30 minutes of your film. If you're writing your script, it's important to have a strong opening. Without a strong attention grabbing opening, no one's going to want to read your script or watch your film. Sometimes this is called a flashbang open. Sometimes it's called a hook. In the first 10 to 15 minutes, you set up tone, you introduce the main character or characters, and you set up the status quo or the ordinary world that they live in. You're essentially giving the audience all the information needed to tell the rest of the story. About halfway through the first act we get our inciting incident. Some people call this the catalyst and the hero's journey it's called the call to adventure. It usually happens at like the 10 or 15 minute mark. This is the event that takes the status quo and does this to it. All of a sudden, we got a problem to solve. In The Matrix, this is when Neo gets the anonymous message on the computer screen that sends him on a quest to find out what the Matrix is. And how to train your dragon, this is the moment when Hiccup finds the dragon that he shot down in the forest, but he realizes that he can't kill it. The rest of Act 1, your main character either refuses the call to adventure, avoids doing something about the problem, or prepares to take action. We get our first plot point at the end of Act 1. This usually happens around minute 25 to 30. This is the first turning point in our story that sends the plot in a new direction and propels us into Act 2. Some people call it the Act 1 climax, some people call it the first act break, some people call it the lock-in. In Star Wars Episode 4, this is when Luke comes home and discovers that his family has been killed by stormtroopers, resulting in his desire to follow Obi-Wan Kenobi and learn to to become a Jedi. Either at this moment or as a result of this moment, our main character decides he's going to take on the problem. The scene usually goes a little something like this. I'm going to take on this problem. The first plot point generally works better if it's something big, distinct, and or memorable. In action movies, this is usually a set piece or a big action sequence. Act 2 is the confrontation. This is where we have all of our rising action. It usually starts 24 to 31-ish minutes into the movie and ends 70 to 90 minutes in the movie. Depending on how long the movie is, it's the longest act in the entire movie by far, and it's usually broken up into two parts. If you follow Save the Cat, then the first part of Act 2 is the fun and games. Tension and conflict aren't high yet. Usually we establish new characters, maybe a subplot or two. In love stories, this is where the relationship develops. In buddy cop stories, this is where they go head to head and argue with each other because they're such opposites. We usually find montages here. Usually in this section, heroes learn new skills and abilities. In How to Train Your Dragon, this is where Hiccup learns how to fly toothless. In The Matrix, Neo learns about The Matrix, its intricacies, and how it works from Morpheus. Whoa. Most of the cool stuff that you see in movie trailers comes from this part of the story. About halfway through Act 2, we get another turning point in the story, which is called, you guessed it, the midpoint. 
It occurs at about the 45 minute mark in a 90 minute movie and a 60 minute mark in a 2 hour movie. Other names for it are the midpoint climax, the midpoint reversal, the act 2 tent pole. At this midpoint there's a major shift in the dynamic of the story, i.e. the main character has a major success, a devastating failure, or a powerful revelation. For example, something goes disastrously wrong, or someone close to the hero dies, or in love stories this is where the couples usually have sex for the first time. In Batman Begins, Bruce Wayne has been planning and acquiring weapons for the first half of Act 2 and then at the midpoint we see Batman for the first time. I'm Batman. That's a major victory for Bruce Wayne because he finally becomes Batman and takes down his father's killer. In How to Train Your Dragon, Hiccup learns how to ride Toothless for the first part of Act 2, but at the midpoint Hiccup finally rides Toothless successfully for the first time. Act 2 can be really tough to write because it's so damn long. Most people find that building up to a midpoint victory or a midpoint defeat helps them navigate through Act 2 and it keeps the story moving. Not every story has to have a midpoint climax and not every story needs one. In the second part of Act 2, things get serious. This is when we raise the stakes, we ratchet up the conflict and the tension, and save the cat, this part of the story is called the bad guys close in. If the first half of Act 2 is about rising to a victory, then the second half of Act 2 is falling to a defeat. If the bad guys were defeated at the midpoint, this is when they regroup and come back stronger. Your hero faces extreme conflict both internally and externally. In romance movies, this is where the couple's relationship starts falling apart. Everything that happens in the second part of Act 2 is building to the second plot point. If you follow Save the Cat, we have the all is lost moment near the end of Act 2, around minute 75-ish. This moment's also called the false defeat or the page 80 crash in a script, even though it doesn't always have to happen at page 80. If the midpoint was a victory, then this moment is the opposite of the midpoint, which would make it a crushing defeat. This is where the girlfriend gets kidnapped or the mentor dies or the headquarters gets blown up. In Star Wars Episode 4, this is where Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke's mentor, gets killed by Darth Vader. In The Matrix, this is where Morpheus, the rebel leader and Neo's mentor, is captured and tortured by the agents after the rebel crew has been nearly wiped out. Shortly after the all is lost moment, we have the dark night of the soul. This happens roughly from minute 75 to 85. Now this moment doesn't have to be very long. It's when your main character or your protagonist feels at his lowest, and it's easy to spot because it's full of depression. To differentiate the two, the all is lost moment is the physical loss of everything. The dark night of the soul moment is how your character emotionally feels about the loss of everything in the apparent defeat. You also get your B story inspiration here where your protagonist gets a pep talk from his love interest or someone close to him. This is usually where the main plot and the subplot merge. In How to Train Your Dragon, this is the moment where Hiccup's pretty bummed about being disowned by his dad, losing his dragon, and being shunned by his fellow Vikings. Then he receives a pep talk from his love interest, Astrid. 300 years and I'm the first Viking who wouldn't kill a dragon. First to ride one though. At the end of Act 2, we get our second plot point. This is another turning point in our story that sends the plot into a new direction and launches our characters into Act 3. Other names for this are the Act 2 Climax, the Act 2 Turning Point, the Act 2 Reversal, the Act 2 Break. In a 95 minute movie, it happens at minute 80. In a 2 hour movie, it happens at the 90 minute mark. We've all seen the moment. It's when the main character gets the big idea or comes up with a plan to solve a problem or defeat the bad guy. The scene usually goes a little something like this. I got it. It's the aha moment. And how to train your your dragon Hiccup comes up with an idea to save his dad and his dragon by training his fellow Viking kids on how to ride dragons. Then something crazy. That's more like it. And Men in Black, after MIB realizes they have one hour to give the galaxy charm back to the aliens or the earth will be destroyed, Agent J sees a painting on the wall that gives him an idea. Yo, Staten Island, gone. Fellas, we're running out of time here. If that bug gets off the planet, if that galaxy, we're all bug food. Hey, old guys! Do those still work? On the flip side of all of this, if your midpoint was a failure, then the second plot point should be a false victory where your heroes seemingly have defeated the bad guy or the couple seems to be perfect and everything seems to be going great. Our second plot point leads us into Act 3, which starts from minute 80 or 90, depending on the length of the movie. Act 3 is the shortest of all the acts. It can run anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. There's a lot at stake. Conflict and tension are at their highest, and the heroes got to overcome ridiculous odds in order to be successful. Sometimes there's an Act 3 
twist in the middle of Act 3 to keep things interesting. Usually it's a revelation or a false death. The Act 3 climax or the finale happens anywhere from minute 85 to 110. The entire movie's been building up to this one moment. Tensions are at their highest, conflict is at its highest. It's the big fight, the car chase, the moment where the guy finally says I love you to the girl. We've all seen it. It's the most exciting moment of the movie. After the climax we have a resolution which is either a happy ending or a tragedy. We answer any final questions, wrap up any loose ends, there are any remaining tensions in the story. Give the audience that <sighs> sigh of relief. That moment to kind of wind down after being on that really intense roller coaster ride you just put them through. Not every story has to follow the three act story structure exactly the way it's defined here. As a matter of fact, there are quite a few movies that don't. For instance, Rocky's an example of a movie that follows a three act structure, but not the traditional three act structure as in the one defined here. Every movie is different. Some movies have four acts, some movies have five acts. It's completely okay to deviate from three act structure. Just do so with caution because remember, story structure is there for for a reason. It's the time-tested and proven way to optimize audience engagement with a story. Me personally, I'm a big fan of it. When I wrote the first draft of my first feature-length film, I violated story structure in every way possible because I wasn't really familiar with it. After getting a lot of lukewarm responses and people who just didn't really connect with it, I learned the importance of story structure really quickly. Then I proceeded to rewrite the screenplay several times, adding more and more structure to it with each draft, and the story got better and better and better. So I am a huge fan of story structure. How do you feel about story structure. Do you use it? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Let me know in the comments section below. Well, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like or subscribe. If you want to leave me, you know, some comments or ask me some questions, you can get a hold of me on Facebook or Twitter. Bam, there's some links for you. And uh, yeah, that's it. Deeper it out. Yo, Darius Pritt here. Let's talk about movie titles. So obviously movie titles are super important. Your title alone can make or break your film. Your title is the first